Welcome, my name is Robert Talek. Today we will talk about a very common problem, neck and back pain. This problem affects over 90% of population in the United States. Everybody in our country will have at least one episode of back or neck pain during their lifetime. But most importantly, about 8% of people develop chronic pain, which means that at any given time, we have about 35 million people suffering from neck or back pain. This is not a life-threatening problem, but it definitely can put your life on hold. Before I start uh, talking about back and neck pain, let me tell you a little more about myself or why you should listen to the guy with funny accent. I'm orthopedic spine surgeon and I'm practicing at Advanced Spine Institute here in Jackson, Tennessee. I originally came from Czechoslovakia. In my earlier life, I played actively ice hockey and I uh, thought that that would be my career. However, when I was 17, one of my friends got rammed into the board and broke his neck and I start having second thoughts. Coming from family of teachers, the education was always on the priority. I decided to go to medical school and pursue the medical career. Uh, it took me only 20 years to learn uh, how to diagnose and treat the patient with spinal diseases, uh, or in other words, only four or five presidential terms. My practice is 100% focused on spinal care, and me and my team treat patients with back and neck problems. We believe that quality time spent with each patient is essential. We look at all aspects of our patients. We take into consideration patients' overall health, underlying medical problem, lifestyle, job requirements, or expectations. We talk with the patient, not at patient. This helps us to determine safest, simplest, and most appropriate treatment method needed to obtain a successful outcome. I believe that it's uh, important not to be able only do or perform state-of-the-art surgeries, but also treat patients with respect, concern, empathy for them and their overall well-being. So let me start with a brief review of spine anatomy. These are structures that may cause pain that may be responsible for entire spectrum of symptoms. There are five essential groups or uh, structures that are important in the spine. One is the spine vertebrae or bony anatomy. These are responsible for support and protection of neural elements. They also are places where the, all the muscle attach and allow for movement. And other moving parts are facet joints. These are joints at the end of or the back side of the spine, which also allow for some movement between individual vertebrae. And then, of course, we have muscle tendons, uh, and intervertebral discs. They also support the bony anatomy and allow for some movement. All these structures are mostly protective and protect the most important structure of all, and it's the spinal cord and nerves, which represent the wiring from the brain, and they carry signals to all the muscles and organs, like electric wiring in a house or uh, any other structure. When we look at problems like back and neck pain, Although pain is the most common symptom, there are some additional problems or presentation that one should be aware of because some of them may represent emergencies or require need for discussion or attention by spine specialist to prevent any further damage to nerve or any other underlying structures. One of them is numbness and tickling or weakness in the arms and hands. These symptoms are more serious because they indicate that there is a compression of the spinal cord. And even if the patient pain is minimal, this is not the time to watch and wait. If this problem is left untreated, symptoms may become permanent and cause a significant neurologic or permanent deficit. Another symptom is pain, pain in the arm, or as we call it, radiculopathy. This is the pain which shoots down into the arm and usually goes below the elbow. This suggests that there is a compression of the nerve root in the neck, and many times this can be treated non-surgically. But if these symptoms persist more than two weeks, it would be wise if you seek medical attention or request seeing a spine specialist. And other symptoms that is a little bit different that uh, just simply pain is numbness, tingling, or weakness in the lower extremities. This is, a, again, a more serious symptoms and commonly caused by pressure on multiple nerves, more commonly by narrowing a spinal canal. 
These symptoms are again not appropriate for watchful waiting. If these symptoms are left untreated, they may become permanent. Again, if one have numbness, tingling, weakness on both legs, it's appropriate to seek medical attention probably within a week or two. Another symptom that is true emergency is loss of bowel or bladder control. This is true emergency because this needs to be addressed almost immediately. Current literature suggests that if the symptom is not addressed within 48 hours, the loss of these functions is permanent. This represents a major social stigma, and therefore, if you experience loss of bowel or bladder control, seek immediate medical attention. Fortunately, majority of patients experience pain limited to neck or a lower back. Those are symptoms caused either traumatic injury, muscle, ligament sprain, or just simple degeneration or arthritis. Those symptoms may improve on their own and most commonly are treated without surgery. However, if those persist beyond the week, you should see a spine specialist to determine the underlying cause. Another set of symptoms is a pain radiating below your knee that may be also associated with foot drop or weakness in a foot. This is a symptom which implies nerve root irritation or compression, and obviously, if there is a weakness, numbness, or neurologic deficit, this represents true neurologic problem. In my practice, we suggest that our patients seek spine specialist evaluation and treatment within 48 hours, as again, if there is a neurologic deficit, it's likely that prolongation or procrastination may lead to permanent weakness in your leg. Next, let me also talk a little bit about symptoms and where they come from. As you know, as we talked earlier, there are five important structures in the spine, and first of them are spine vertebrae. Those are mostly affected by trauma, infection, or tumor. These conditions are fortunately very rare. However, they can really alter the mechanic stability of entire spinal column, and uh, subsequently create symptoms or damage to uh, underlying neural structures. Another structure which is affected by different conditions is facet joint. This is the small joint at each uh, level, and we have actually more than 30 facet joints throughout our entire spine. These joints are most commonly affected by arthritis or just simple bone spurs. However, these joints are very close to uh, nerves, and any problem affecting facet joint may then cause compression of the nerves with subsequent pain down to your legs, arms, or both. Another structure which is affected very commonly in the spine is intervertebral disc. Intervertebral disc is like a tire providing cushioning between individual vertebrae. You can see on the very left side that it has radial part which is uh, similar to a tire, and the core, which is filled with jello-like substance. It contains 90% of water. However, as we age, the core side desiccate or lose the water, which creates a degenerative or aging process in the disc, ultimately responsible for cracks and bulging of the disc. In certain cases, there might be a rupture in outer lying, which allows a core part of the disc extrude and then press on the nerves, which we then call disc rupture. Disc degeneration of the disc is in itself inconsequential. However, if you have compression on a nerve, it creates totally different set of problems, sometimes leading to permanent damage of the nerve if you wait too long. Another important issue with care about back and neck pain, or the question I get very often is how to find the right doctor. Whether you are an athlete who wants to get back in the game or just a parent who needs to provide for your family, finding right physician can make all the difference in your care. This does not mean that you need to have endless doctor shopping visits for injections, diagnostic procedures, spinal cord stimulator, or any other magic. It is relatively simple. Look for a doctor who has a specialized training in treatment of the condition you're looking for, in this case, for back and neck pain. It does not really matter whether he is orthopedic surgeon or neurosurgeon or physical medicine doctor. You want to have somebody who is experienced with your type of problem, who see many patients with different problems, and who is willing and able to devise specific plan for your problem. 
Once you find the right doctor, what can one expect from initial patient visit? The visit consists of two steps. First, you will be asked questions about your symptoms that will determine what's causing your back or neck problem. Most often, your doctor will move your arms, legs, and determine whether the pain is coming from your back, your neck, whether you have damage to your nerves, reflexes, or problems with your balance. This is completely painless. Although you may need further testing like x-ray or MRI, these are only confirmatory studies. Believe or not, the most important diagnostic is talking to your doctor and physical exam. We do not treat MRIs but people, and therefore it's very important to provide feedback to your doctor and engage in very meaningful discussion about your symptoms, expectations, and lifestyle. Let me talk a little bit about treatment options for your back or neck problem. In general, we have three major categories or three bags from which we can design your specific treatment plan. First is home-based treatment. There are many things that one can do at home. Most of the back and neck pains are very common and most of these problems are self-limiting. They will resolve within a few weeks. There are multiple information on the web or through your libraries. They can give you some idea about aerobic stretching or general home exercises one can do to help their back or neck problem. Another area is non-surgical treatment options. These include physical therapy, which represent a multiple exercises to improve your mobility, flexibility, and stability of your core to better transfer energy through your body. All these measures can significantly improve your symptoms or treat you entirely. They may be done in a pool or on the land, depending on your condition. If your symptoms are severe enough, we sometimes use injections to alleviate pain and jumpstart non-surgical treatment. Again, there are multiple so-called nerve blocks, which include steroid injections in epidural space, selective injection individual nerve roots to block the pain, or injection to facet joints. All these modalities target pain and try to improve support mechanisms around the affected structure. Last but not least is spine surgery. Again, in my experience, about 10% of patients in my practice ultimately need or choose to have a spine surgery. Let me first try to shed some light on why we do surgery and what are the indications. Surgery is indicated for mechanical causes. It means if your nerve is compressed or your spine is unstable or you have a narrowing of spinal canal. We cannot cut out patient pain and therefore it's very important to discuss first whether you have mechanical problem which mechanical surgery can solve. In my practice we never try surgery because everything else failed. You either have a problem that surgery can fix or not. So as I said, surgery has a very specific goal to relieve or treat underlying pathology. We have multiple techniques how to accomplish this. We hear traditional surgery, minimally invasive surgery. However, in very simple terms, spine surgery has only two goals. To decompress or unpinch your nerves or stabilize your spine or both if necessary. So the first question that one should always ask is, do I need the surgery and not how it can be done. Skipping a first step may result that one can get surgery that he or she might not need. So don't jump the gun. We surgeon loves to talk about carpentry and our shiny toys. But if you focus on why, not how, you always get better results. So what are the differences between open or traditional spine surgery and current minimal invasive spine surgery? Let me first talk a little bit about traditional spine surgery. Spine surgery is evolving very rapidly, and each technique has their pros and cons. Open or traditional spine surgery offer good exposure of your vital structures. It allows relatively quickly address any potential complication that will occur during the surgery. These procedures are well established, and we have a significant track record documenting outcomes. The disadvantage of traditional surgery is that it requires hospitalization. These approaches are harder on patient. Most commonly, they are associated with a significant blood loss and more postoperative pain. How about minimally invasive surgery? Those are newer techniques that have become available most recently. 
the ultimate goal is to minimize collateral damage or footprint associated with the spine surgery. Again, we as a surgeons try to address underlying pathology and differences really only with access. The advantages of minimally invasive approach is that there is a minimal collateral damage, minimal blood loss, it's easier on a patient, and sometimes there is very short or even no hospitalization required. On the other side, these surgeries are more complex, uh, require specializing training, and we do not have any long-term outcome data. In addition, the small access may limit surgeon's ability to address entire underlying pathology, which sometimes may lead to suboptimal outcome.